Hi everyone, today I'm going to be addressing the question, is boredom good for your brain? I'm Julia, I am a PhD student studying neuroscience and I always try and find ways that I can be more creative, more productive and just get things done that I actually want to get done. And I recently read a book called Bored and Brilliant and this book argues that in the world we live in today, we are just plugged in all the time and we never give ourselves the chance to be bored. And because we never switch off from things like our devices or Netflix, we don't have the space to have those sparks of creativity. Now, I can sort of see why this might be the case. And I wanted to do a little video on your brain on boredom. So what the brain looks like when it's bored, how boredom is potentially good for us and also when and how it could be bad for us. I think saying just get bored full stop, end of story, isn't super useful if you are looking to become more creative. And I also think that, you know, completely switching off from technology isn't the best thing to do either. But using technology with intention is what I'm striving to do in my day-to-day -day life because there are definitely times where I just feel sucked in to my apps and that means that I am just scrolling mindlessly and not really wanting to do that and it eats into time where I could be doing other things. So the most common definition for boredom is an aversive state of wanting but being unable to engage in a satisfying activity. It's thought that boredom could have originally been an emotional cue that you aren't doing activities right now that are aligned with your goals or your survival so it can help redirect your behaviour to something which is more engaging and more satisfying but it's still unclear why we have this state of boredom. Regarding boredom in the brain there have been a few fMRI studies done, only a few though and with small numbers of individuals but across these few studies the general consensus is that when we are bored the areas of the brain that are active are part of the default mode network. So when we're bored I think I used to be like oh, there's just nothing going on in my brain right now, I'm so bored. But your brain is still active when you are bored. And the default mode network are a series of different brain regions which are thought to be involved with internally focused thinking. So for example, this could be thinking of yourself, remembering past events, and then also imagining future events. Recent work is also indicating that the default mode network is important in relating events going on in the environment, so extrinsic events into this internal narrative as well. This is a network that is activated when a person is mind wandering or daydreaming. So when you go into that state where you're imagining your lovely house in the future where you're gonna live or the car you're gonna have or whatever it is that you imagine, that is when the default mode network is active and it allows your brain to imagine these future things and also think about how you view yourself as well. One of these board and brain studies also showed that as well as the default mode network, some of these regions being active, there was a region of the brain called the anterior insular cortex, which was inactive, or it was negatively correlated, meaning there was a drop in activity in this region compared to the rest control group. The anterior insular cortex is believed to be a really important region of the brain for activating executive control. So that is that focused attention, engaging the brain, if you will, in whatever is going on, the task in front of it. And so this paper hypothesized that in this boredom group, that the brain, fails to engage these executive networks. But all this work is very, very preliminary and still very early on. But I think it's really important to understand why our brains get bored and what they look like when they are bored, because boredom can be really not good for an individual. If, for example, you are really bored in your biology class and you need to get a grade in your biology exam to go on to university, but you can't engage because you are bored. This is not an ideal situation. Boredom can be induced by our environment. This is what we call state boredom because the events around us are leading you into the state of boredom. But as individuals, we have different capacities for feeling bored. And this is what we call 
trait boredom. And it's been shown that individuals who have high trait boredom, so more likely to feel bored and more likely to feel negative when they do feel bored. This has been linked with incidents of depression, anxiety, and other non-pleasant feelings like anger and frustration. So in this respect, being bored that individuals who have this high trait boredom is not necessarily a good place to be. A recent study indicated though that being bored isn't a wired in state. It's more your reaction to boredom. So at rest, individuals who have high and low trait boredom, their brain activity looks very similar. But when you give these individuals really boring tasks to do, then the individuals who have low trait boredom, so are less likely to feel bored and are less likely to feel negative when they do get bored, these individuals have higher brain activity in the left frontal lobe of their brain. And what this has been associated with is approach behavior and more likely to be engaged in the task at hand. And the people who have high trait boredom didn't have as much activity here in this region of the brain. So it looks like our reaction to boredom is what drives this feeling of negativity when we feel bored. And it's thought that the individuals who have low trait boredom are able to take the task that is boring and make it something which is engaging. So boredom definitely is not always good, but there have been some studies which argue that boredom could be really good for creativity because we are activating this default mode network, which is important for mind wandering. And when we mind wander, we make lateral connections. So connections that we already have in our brain can sort of come together and we can merge ideas and come up with new, amazing creative ideas. This is why a lot of people say that you get great ideas when you're in the shower or when you're folding your laundry because your brain has time to be bored. You can allow some of these ideas to come together and give you a spark of creativity. There was one study that showed when individuals read from a phone book for 15 minutes and then had to come up with ideas for how you could use two paper cups. They came up with many more ideas than individuals who didn't read the phone book before they had to come up with this list. So this type of study argues that giving your brain that space to be bored before attempting to do something which requires creativity could help you in these instances. The problem today is that we never really let ourselves get bored. I would recommend reading the book Bored and Brilliant because it gives you a really nice overview of the science on this subject and it also talks about how we just need to be a bit more intentional with our tech to give ourselves some space to be bored. So I'm now trying to do this. I'm trying to, when I get a shower, I don't listen to anything. I'm trying to give myself that space. I'm trying to spend less time on my phone. And when I do go on, I try and be intentional with that time. And I just think having a little bit of breathing room can allow your brain that space to come up with new ideas. But boredom isn't the solution to every problem. And I think for me personally, if I'm in a state of mind where I'm really overthinking and I feel very, very negative, then it's not gonna be conducive to the situation for me to enter a state of boredom where the default mode network is activated, which allows mind wandering and thinking about oneself. And I'm already thinking about myself in a negative way in that situation what to me is most beneficial is mindfulness. Mindfulness is different from mind wandering because mindfulness allows you to focus on the present right now. It takes you out of that thinking about yourself and into the moment. And the main way that this is done or this is practiced is by focusing on the breath. So I use a meditation app called Headspace. When I feel very, very overwhelmed and I'm overthinking, I will then take my brain out of that overthinking state into the present moment using meditation. So I think with boredom being good for the brain, it's good in certain situations if you are feeling really, really stuck for an idea and you need to be creative, but nothing is really coming to you, then introducing some periods of boredom into your day could be beneficial for allowing ideas to come together. For me, I'm also trying to do this when I am working. When I work on a really hard project, there's so many times where my brain wants me to check my emails or check my phone and procrastinate because my brain is like, yeah, this is hard and I don't really wanna 
engage. So in those moments now, I just sit and don't let myself do anything else and give my brain that little bit of boredom that it probably needs to continue with the work I'm doing. But if you're in a situation where you're really negatively overthinking everything, mindfulness is probably a better solution in that moment. It's better to take yourself out of your head into the present and give your brain a break from all of that negative thinking. So those are my thoughts on if being bored is good for your brain. I would say in certain instances, yes, it is. And in other instances, not so much. But I think we could definitely do with unplugging, especially if you are like me and find yourself scrolling when you don't really want to be and you're like, how have I just spent two hours on my phone? That is when introducing some boredom into your day you can train your brain to increase your attention span and stop that reflex for reaching for your phone. So thank you so much for watching. If you want more neuroscience from me and more neuroscience-based productivity and mindset tips, then subscribe to the channel or you can catch me over on social media and I will see you in the next one. Bye.